you were talking earlier, one of the things uh, about the law that sometimes happens is you're writing a play and you want it to get produced. Mm. And then somehow that can become a stumbling block. Not a writer's <laughs> block, but. Well, I think it's something you'd have to. I'm sure everybody here at this table has had to do that gut check of like, okay, here's where my creativity will lead me. But theaters only have the resources to do this. And what do you do about it? And, you know, I mean, you, you've actually. Uh, you had a show with 15 actors, I remember, what was that show? You did a workshop of it um, that I saw. Oh, Rages? Yeah, oh no, I saw the production of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, it was it was like 10, yeah, massive. So, when you were starting to write that, did you did you ever stop for a second and go, this is never going to get done? Uh, well, in a roundabout way, uh, I'll just tell this anecdote, but when I started out in the theater, uh, when I was very young, I had a lot of very bad experiences. In about 1986, I went, okay, that's it, I'm not writing for the theater anymore, I'm going to go do something else. And I didn't, I didn't want to worry about people producing things, I didn't want people approving of my stuff or disapproving, I didn't want to deal with that. And after about a year of not writing any plays, I started to get this idea of, for a play, and I, I thought, I'm just going to write this, and I don't care what people have told me. You know, I was told constantly it can't be more than five people, and it has to have one set, and for God's sake, no swearing and no sex, and you know, long scenes. And I thought, I'm going to throw that all out the window, and I'm going to write a play which became Unidentified Human Remains and the True Nature of Love. And I don't care if anyone ever fucking produces it. I'm not changing it. It's going to be the play I want to write, and it's the most successful play I've ever written. I mean, it's, it's still being produced. So it's that weird, that weird thing. I, and I never tried to let um, money or physical challenges stop me from writing something, because I think what the theater is really about is imagination and finding really interesting ways to solve those problems when you don't have the money. And quite often, the best theater comes from not having money. But we're in a climate now where when I wrote Unidentified Human Remains, there were five or six artistic directors in the country who went, wow, we've never done anything like this before, and that's exciting. I don't think we have those artistic directors in this country anymore, and if I gave that play to anybody running a theater in Canada right now, it would not be produced in a million years, because they don't have the imagination or the will to try to realize something that they don't well, financial security to take that money. Well, there was no financial security then. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there was, true. frankly, yeah. less yeah. money than that was going on as yeah. well. So that wasn't really the issue. I mean, part of the issue is, and I'll say this, um, I just uh, judged a playwriting competition, which I can't talk about, but I read 27 plays for that competition, and two of them were very good to exceptional, and the rest Every one of them, these are not beginning level playwrights, these are people who have quite a lot of experience. Every one of those plays felt to me like they had been written for an artistic director to read and choose. Not for a playwright to tell a story they wanted to tell. They were all three to five characters, they were all one to two sets, there was no sex, there was no profanity, there was no honesty of language. They were all, and yet they were all credible plays. They were all probably will get done because they're not very imaginative and not very challenging. And I think that that's really unfortunate that, that we have to consider those things now because we don't really have the people with the resources intellectually or, or creatively to help us get to that next level of where we have to go with the play. It's funny you say that. I just recently submitted a play to, we were just talking about the Globe in Regina, yeah. and it was rejected on the title. Yeah. They said, I think this play will scare off my patrons. The title of the play is Dead White Writer on the Floor. <laughs> oh, well, and it's a comedy. Yeah. Oh, so well. how many patrons do they have is the real question here. And why are you scared of sending them away? You should actually be bringing new people in. That's the issue. Anyway, Marjorie, I think it's over to you. That's your um, I have a real, like, Whenever I've been tasked when someone's given me a commission and, and been very specific about what they want of that commission, I, I, I never come back with anything that they want. <laughs> and I really, I, and, and I've stopped, when we start having those conversations, I have to be very, I'm quite open about that now. That I'm like, I kind of write what I write. I, you know, I can show you things that are early on that you can say if you're interested in it, but that, this is kind of how, what, this is the kind of thing I do. And I've been quite open about that, and that's probably 
you know, close some doors for me, but it's, it's a much healthier way to work because I have found that when I've been given a very specific commission, I'm like, I don't know what that is. I'm like, I'm, I'm not necessarily inspired by that. I, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to have those eight or ten days where I'm going to be able to talk about that. So it's not a story that's coming out of you. No, yeah, it's, it's a story that you're trying to pose Correct. yourself up top of a very different thing. And, um, you know, if, if they happen to be two ideas that link, fine, okay, or if I can find my way into it, fine. But I, I tend to be very direct and very open about that conversation with artistic directors because I simply am not, I don't think I'm that, I'm not that kind of writer. It, it, has, it costs me a lot, it costs me a lot to, to, give, to give my work up and, and when I write them, you know, like I, I'm, I'm pretty much, most, most of my plays, you know, my plays are pretty <laughs> tragic and, and, you know, I'm in opera now so they're more tragic. <laughs> and um, so they, they cost me a lot. So if I'm going to put that kind of energy into it, it's, it's it's going to have to come from somewhere from, from inside me. It's the same with me. Uh, the only time I get anything vaguer is in writer's block is when I get a commission with a specific set of requirements. Right now I've been commissioned to write a play about, uh, or I may be commissioned, I have to, to decide, about autistic children and horses. And neither, uh, neither of which I know very much about, but it's a theater company that has a great reputation of touring plays all over the world for several years and doing excellent quality. And so it's like, I'm very intrigued to write something and be a part of this because they've done one of my plays before and I can't argue with the work they do. I just have to do the work myself and so I'm debating with that. But also, uh, several years ago, I was right in residence uh, at Native Earth Performing Arts and uh, Beth Dolan was AD there and I was sitting down with her and she was talking with me. And, you know, I used to be artistic director of Native Earth. Uh, I've been write, I've been writing for 20, 25 years, and she sits me down and she says that, Drew, everyone knows you can be funny. I want to see you be serious. I want you to write me a depressing play. Oh, okay. I'd never been given specific limita um, limitations. So I sat down, I went home and thought, okay, what's the most depressing thing I can think of? <laughs> Residential schools. So I have a play opening in Vancouver day after tomorrow about residential schools. But I just find it, found it so bizarre to be told at my stage of the game what I should and shouldn't write. But that's a challenge that in the end that you found something from that you mm -hmm. wanted to write about. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> yeah, that, that seems odd to me because it's kind of uh, fucking with the writer's voice. I mean, we, we all have voices. We all have things to do and to say, you know, bring me something that's not funny because I want something from you that's not funny. I don't even know how to do that. I mean, I don't think my plays are particularly funny and or not funny. They're all those things. They are what they are. But I, I, what I was very curious about, and I should have asked, but I never thought, I said, so have you gone up to any of the other writers and said, I know you can be serious, but I want you to write me something funny. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> I also think if, if a theater company comes up to you and you're, you're a certain level of experience and they commission you for something and you give it to them, they should do it. I think they should just produce it. Like, I, I think it's hard. Like, at this stage, it's hard to get teased, you know? Well, I just find it hard, man. I don't they know. They commission you and then they don't do the piece. Well, I don't know. I, am I right? I, I could be... I could I'm be not going to disagree with that, Andrew. I, I, I am, because I think, I mean, not every play that's written has to be produced or should be produced. But no, this is my, this is my point, though. My point is, exactly. Like, if you're going to commission me to do something, if you're going to say, write this and only write that, well, then you better do it and live with the consequences. That's what I'm saying. I don't know where you guys are getting these commissions, because I get commissions <laughs> and I to write what I want to write. No one's ever told me, yeah, I, I want this I, kind of thing oh, give oh, me this or, or whatever. The commissions I've had have always been, do you want to write something? What is it generally? And then I write it. Oh, and man. then it doesn't mean it gets produced. It starts all. off that way, and then it's like, oh, wow, that's good, but can you do this? What if you make it into a bunny? And the next thing you know, it's not its not your voice. But then, okay, my, my thing, I guess what I'm kind of say, trying to say is, you don't want me to write with my voice, or you want to change it or whatever, that's fine, but then just do it. Then that's going to be the price that you'll have to pay. Well, yes, because right, so what you get is, dictated. they ask yeah. you for your unfunny play, and you give it to them, and they say, oh, this isn't very funny. I know, yeah. You have to be authentic to your voice. Yeah. I wonder why. Exactly. You know, well, they have all these. Yes, that's what you want. <laughs> let, me, let me point out that the, 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 the play I wrote for uh, Yvette Nolan at Native Earth is being produced by Firehall Arts Center in Vancouver. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They didn't like what I wrote for them. 
Well, Blythe didn't like the jar boy. <laughs> oh, please, the Canadian stage didn't like anything that was a hit elsewhere when it was produced. I mean, come on, we all had Canadian stage commissions that never made it on the stage that showed up at Tarragon or Passamurai or, or Factory or wherever. And, and thank God, thank God, I would rather be given a commission and the money, and if they're not going to do it, find someone else who would, then write it for free and then go looking for people. If one has a choice, I'll take the money. If you don't want to do it, great, I'll take it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But I do think there is a danger in censoring oneself because you think it won't get produced. And when I work with, with young writers, the thing I always try to instill in them is, especially your first drafts, don't write them for production. Write them for yourself. Don't censor yourself. Don't worry, you know, I use this example all the time. If I'm writing for film and I have a, a scene that's set in Toronto and the next scene is set on the moon with mer people, We've got to go to Toronto and film it, and then we've got to build a moon set and come up with mer people costumes and make it look really realistic and, and do it. Whereas if I'm in the theater and we're here, you give me a light, you give me something representing the CN Tower in the background, we're in Toronto, we change the light, we change our movement, and we're suddenly mer people on the moon. And the audience goes there with you. And to not allow writers to do that, uh, to try to restrict them or to try to restrict yourself early in the process is usually the death of a play. I mean, it's not going to be anything exciting because you're not challenging yourself, you're not challenging anyone <clears throat> around you. So I'm always really big on don't write that first draft for production, write it for yourself and then show it to people you trust and start talking to them from there. Mm -hmm.